Hi everybody, I actually started this a little bit early, few minutes, not that much, because I decided that I thought it was a good idea, because that's just how I'm living my life this week. So welcome everybody, this is my second part of my highlighter Thunderdome where I'm comparing highlighter pens. If you can hear me, please let me know in the chat, make sure everything is working okay. And if you are here on the replay, you could say hi in the comments because that would be rad too. What I will be doing today is wrapping up the second half of my comparison of highlighter pens. I will give the same disclaimers I gave before. A, I do not have all of the highlighter pens. That's way more pens than I need and I already have way too goddamn many pens. B, this is not just pastel or just bright highlighters. I've got a mixture of both because that's just what I happen to have. And see, these are all my personal opinions. So if you disagree with me, it's totally fine. I have a Google Sheet. I will be putting it in the description once it is finished. I didn't want to put it up there while I am still in the middle of doing it that has all of these ratings on it. It looks like this, and look at that. That's how it is so far. This is where we ended up last week after uh, Kat and I wrapped, did this first part of the situation. So basically what it looks like we're doing today is finishing the bleed through testing. We already did the printer paper, as you can see, the eggplants are the number one most awesome. The thumbs up are, they're great. The meh face is a eh. And then the thumbs down is you suck ass. And if you really suck ass, we gave you a little turd. So that doesn't always happen. We just, that's for like the worst of the worst. All right. So we're gonna continue that. And then once we're done with that, I will do a couple of other things. I'm gonna compare the two erasable ones that I have to each other to kind of give that a situation and I'm going to talk about how one thing that I'm not putting on this list which is the shape of the highlighter because that's very personal and I have very specific feelings about it. All right so that's what we're doing today. I hope that that makes sense for all of you. I lost the chat so I need to find it. Where are you chat? I lost you. Okay hold please. Hold please chat. There you are. I found you now. Sorry I, I'm 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 still working on my live stream all year. My goal is to make this live stream better. All right, Lydia, I did get your package. I have not opened it yet though, but I did get it. So thank you. Quit. Ooh, my system has run out of application memory. Are we doing okay here? Is everything still working? That's weird. It looks like I'm still streaming, so okay, cool. That's really funny. My computer doesn't usually have these problems, so oh well. Um, anyhow, let's get going. Yeah, Loki, pro oh, there's Loki. He's right behind me. Hi, buddy. Hi. And Lucy is, we'll give you a quick Lucy glimpse and then we'll get started. Let's see if you can catch him. He's in the cat palace. There he is, right up there. There's my Lulu, if you can see him asleep. All right, let's move this back very gently. Gently. Okay, now that we've had kitties, it went black for a second. Okay, well, I have no idea what the hell just happened, but that's okay, we'll figure it out. Anyway, you guys, you guys are all so cold, holy moly. Today is like 60 degrees in Napa and it rained yesterday, but I've been having the most whack-ass week and we will talk a little bit about that, I guess, as we do this. Let's get right into the second half of the highlighter Thunderdome. Alrighty, so here is the Hobonichi Weeks. Now, last time we, last time, I'm gonna move this down just a skosh. Last time we, uh-oh. Okay, hold please. Again, I gotta get the focus going. My goodness. My, 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 my. Um, the, uh, there we go. So we, the last time we, the re, okay, let me also add, the reason that I had to cut this in half is because I had a different phone call on Tuesday that I had to get to, and I'm glad I did. It was a very important phone call. You guys will find out more about that as time goes on. 
Um, my kids are not here. They also went back to their dads. So we tested out on the Hobonichi, but we did not grade it. So right now we will be flipping back here to see how everything looks. Now this is the Hobonichi. The paper is fucking gnarly ass TP paper. Aw, uh, hi, Pi. Thank you for the super chat. So, um, everything is going to kind of show through, but as we're looking at this, I would say right now that this one, what is that one? The take note, the Crayola take note highlighter is by far the winner of the, the highlighters on the, um, the, the Hobonichi paper. So I'm going to give the Crayola take note, the eggplant on the Hobonichi. It also got the, the award on the, uh, the printer paper. And I think it's cause it's erasable. Erasable pens put down less ink. So if we look at this, the ones that kind of came through the most would be this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So those ones are, these would be the thumbs down ones. That would be the Statler, the Tombow, the Faber-Castell, and the Kira Rich. So those ones are all thumbs down. None of them are awful. None of them fully bled through. And I think that's because the Tomo River paper, I'm going to add my face to this. I think that's because the Tomo River paper doesn't, it, the, the inks sit on top of it. So you have to let them dry, but they don't bleed through. They just kind of show through. So we have the Tombow as a thumbs down. The uh, Kira Rich is a thumbs down. What was the next one? The Statler and the Faber-Castell. And then the rest of them, I would say that they're all pretty meh. The frick, this one, what is it? The passion marker and the super tips. The passion marker, the, the rest of them are all actually not that bad. I would almost say that the other three are just meh. They're not that bad. So I'm gonna change the fabric, everything else to a thumbs up and the fabric castell and the other ones are actually gonna be a meh, but I don't think any of them actually bled through. So this is pretty good, I think. Which is, you know, considering how much this paper is not my favorite paper in the world, I'm actually okay with that. I'm so surprised the Sharpie liquid didn't bleed either. Like, where is it? Here, like, it's actually not as bad as some of the other ones, which blows my mind. You know what I'm saying? All right. So now that we've checked out the Hobonichi, the next paper that I have is the Loish term 1917. And I, I went into my previous year bullet journal to do this because, you know, that's like the situation. And so for those of you who were not here the last time I am using for the sake of, for the sake of consistency, all pinks for these bleed throughs. And I will go over all of the highlighters that I have while I am putting these down. Because if you did not watch the first one, you will have missed that, but you need to go watch the first one. Why wouldn't you watch the first one? Like just seriously. All right. So these are the highlighters that I have and I'm testing them on the Loish term 1917. And if you see, hello, my name is your mom. That's something Kat wrote in here hella days ago. So it gives me a job to do for my index pages since I never fucking use them. Um, a, a hobo Nietzsche. <laughs> All right. So we have a mild liner, zebra mild liners. We have the Stabilo Boss highlighters, the big, the big chunkers. We have the Friction Erasable highlighters. We have the Sharpie S Note highlighters, which have thus far, I think, been an ahead of the game on most everything. The Passion markers, which you can only get from the Passion Planners website which I have decided their chisel tip is a little bit different than all the other ones. And I kind of like it. The iconic two way pens, which I would love to have come in other colors because I think that they're fun. 
the Faber Castell text liners, the Statler text surfers, tubular, the Tombow mono edge, which is the most reinforced of the chisel tips. The Sharpie Liquid, which is the ooey gooeyest of all of them, hence the name Liquid. The Crayola Super Tips, which are not actually highlighters, but are a great substitute, so I wanted to throw them in. Let's move this over a skosh so you can see all of it. There we go. The Crayola Take Note Erasable Highlighters. And the Zebra Kira Rich Glitter Highlighters. If you'd like to see how they perform on different types of pens, that is in the previous situations. So I'm going to let this dry for a hot second. And while we are letting it dry, perhaps I am going to go to the screen really quick and we will quickly go over the other stuff that we've looked at. We have the prices per pen based on buying all of them, like buying the pack of them, the number of colors that are available, do they have soft colors, bright colors, or both available, the different tip styles that are available with each pen, and then we have the gradings on dry time and smear test for all of them. At the end of this, we're going to go through, this is not updated yet, update please. There we go. Now the Hobo Nietzsche scores are there. Um, we have to go through the... Uh, we have to go through the Leuchtturm, the Baron Fig, and the Archer and Olive Papers. And then once that's done, we are going to take a look at comparing the two erasable ones on this list, the Friction and the Crayola Take Note, to each other because I want to see which one is the better erasable highlighter for those of you guys who care. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the ones that are shaped like a pen versus the ones that are shaped like a fatty boom batty. All righty. All right. Hands down. Yeah. Text. Right, anyway, looking at the uh, chat just to see how you guys are doing. I'm so glad to see all of you. Okay, so this is dry, except for the Cure Rich, which takes 100 years to dry, but I'm just not gonna let that phase me. Oh, hi, Jess. Hi. Okay, we got some bleed through going on here. So which are the ones that bleed through the most? I would suggest that the Stabilo, huh? My uh, case is here. Okay, cool. The, the Stabilo bled through more at the end here than for the whole thing. And that this one, the liquid, is probably the one. I would suggest that the, li the Stabilo and the Super Tips both get a thumbs down for bleed through. But that the uh, liquid gets a poop because the liquid really sucks ass. So we're going to add those scores right now. I'm going to put the poop, I'm going to award the poop to the Sharpie liquid, and I'm going to award the thumbs down. If I can find one, I'm just trying to copy here. I'm going to award the thumbs downs to the Stabilo and the Super Tips. I knew the Stabilo was going to suck ass, though, for this one, like... Oh my God, I could not under, I get that they're super like Instagram friendly, but they are so bleedy on certain papers. Do you know what I'm saying? All right, so, um, as for the rest of them, the meh ones I would say are probably the Kira Rich, no, it's Faber-Castell. The Faber-Castell, the Kira Rich, and the... Statler, those ones are meh. And remember, this is all, this is all subjective. And then the, of all of them is one, the most phenomenal of them all. Uh, it would probably be the friction. The friction is the one that shows through the very least. So the friction gets the eggplant and the rest of them all get a thumbs up. So 
So I'm gonna quickly show you the screen so you can see, let me refresh, because I'm, I'm entering on my iPad to make it easier. I'm gonna refresh this so that you can see here is the Loish term situation. We have the friction highlighters as the eggplant, the top winner of the bleed through. Then we have good ones are zebra, Sharpie S note, passion markers, iconic two-way pens, Tombow mono edge, and Crayola take note. And then for meh, we have zebra Kira rich, we have Statler, Faber-Castell, and then for thumbs down, we have the Stabilo Boss and the Crayola Super Tips with Sharpie Liquid being the shittiest, hence the little pupe. The little pupe. All right, so now that we've done those, we're going to move to the Baron Fig. This is actually a piece of Baron Fig paper that I cut out of my, um, my notebook when I was doing a Dutch door situation i think it was when i did my during my yearly setup when i set up my 21 in 2021 and i was saving it to potentially add it back in but i was like hell no why don't we just use this for the thing so this paper is 100 this paper is 90 gsm it's thicker than the loish term paper Right, Heather? I rated the frame. This is, I'm trying to be scientific, Heather. I'm not trying to go with just my, with just my preferences, the things I like. Alrighty. I'm not, I'm trying to be a little less sassy. That's not true. Okay. Mild liner. This is all on the Baron Fig. Stabilo. Friction. Sharpie S note. Passion. And I think one of the things that's going on here with the way we're rating, I remember in the past when we've done Thunderdomes, we've kind of given them points, but this time we're just sort of giving them emojis. I think the situation is because, especially with highlighters, what's best for you with a highlighter is not necessarily what's best for me with a highlighter. Do you know what I mean? Like if you're a student, you might want a specific kind of highlighter. And if you do a lot of fucking Bible highlighting or some shit, then you want a highlighter that's gonna work for that. If you like to use them as markers, then there's a different thing you might want for that. So with highlighters, that is the wrong one. That's the, that's the liquid. Okay, so we gotta remind ourselves here that these two are swapped. My bad. That's okay though. Shit happens. Um, you know, so instead of saying like, like I'm gonna tell you which one is my best one based on my opinions here when we're done, but my best one does not necessarily mean the best one. It means it's the best one for me. And I tend to use highlighters as markers rather than highlighters. I don't, I, I do highlight stuff from time to time. But my usage of highlighters tends to be in a decorative fashion rather than a uh, functional fashion. So for me, what I want in a highlighter at the very end of this is different than what you might want. Did I know Vegas has an Eiffel Tower? Yes, it's at the New York, New York uh, Hotel. I'm wiping my nose because I've got a bit of a runny nose. Um, they also have a, a roller coaster that's hella fun. Costs hella money, but it's hella fun. I would love to give everybody big hugs. Deb, I see you in the comments. Hi, Deb. Yeah. Exactly, Artie. Artsy. Artsy chickadee. My kid could not handle the Sharpie liquid because it was so smeary as a lefty. But if you love it, then you fucking love it. So don't take any of this as, like, a situation that you need to, like... Don't let me... Let me give you some information on these and then you make your best decision. All right, let's flip this fucker over. Oh, there we go. That's the Sharpie liquid right there. The Sharpie liquid, if you look at this, they're all performing really well on the Baron Fig paper. There are three that actually have bleed through, but the one with the way worst bleed through is the liquid Sharpie. Not surprising, I don't think. Now the other ones that have bleed through, it's a little bit of bleed through. 
is this guy, the Stabilo, and the Kira Rich, the two that bled through before. So again, well, actually not the super tips though. The super tips did just fine on this paper, but the Kira Rich and the Stabilo both bled through. As for meh, there's actually a lot of good ones on here. So let me see here. Let's take a look. Let's let's rate them. The mild liners is a little bit of shadow, but not much. I'd give that a thumbs up. The friction shows through a little bit more. It's this guy right here. Whoever this one is. No, 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 no. Whoever this one is is the winner this puppy right here that's the one that gets the eggplant and that would be the take note it doesn't surprise me that the ones that are the um erasable ones tend to be the best when it comes to bleed through it makes sense if you think about it right will my spreadsheet be posted somewhere barbara yes i will post it in the description of this video i'm also going to put up hopefully this weekend a blog post with pictures of all of the swatches of all the colors that are available as well as the spreadsheet on my website cindygunterbaldo.com so that'll all be available this weekend but the spreadsheet i will put in the description of this video and the previous video as soon as i'm done all right okay so as for the ones that are, that honestly, I don't think any of these, I guess the ones that would deserve the meh would be like this one, this one, and this one. These like three, which are the Faber-Castell, the Statler, and the Tombow would get meh, and all of the rest of them will get thumbs up. The, the paper, you know, I have bled through on this paper quite a bit when I have been working in my bullet journal, but it usually comes from putting too many layers down of one color. Like if I layer, like here, see the little blue mark here under that? That's from coloring over this section too much. So the Baron Fig does really well with one layer of ink, but if you start like multiply layering liquids on there, that's when it starts to have a problem. So we need meh. So for Statler, Tombow Mono Edge, and what was the other one? Faber Castell. And then all the rest get thumbs up. Alrighty. So quickly we'll take a look at the screen so you can get a look at the way this shook out. Here we go. with the Sharpie liquid once again coming in last and the Crayola Take Note taking first. So far, the Crayola Take Note seems to be like the overall winner of the bleed through. That one and the friction, which makes sense, you know, for the erasable boys. Am I right? And now Archer and Olive. That is the final, the final countdown here of bleed through. The paper that is basically cardstock. This is actually a Archer and Olive blank page notebook because that's the one I happen to have available. It's the same 160 GSM paper. So it's the same as like a standard Archer and Olive situation. I have tested Soul. I have tested the Archer and Olive acrylographs. I have a video up for it on my channel. They're fine. They're like paint pens. I prefer Posca pens over them. <laughs> Eggplant is best because eggplant is my favorite emoji. All right, so here we go. Mild liner. And I have videos looking at these individually for almost every single one. Not all of them, but almost every single one. I have videos looking at these different highlighters. You can check them all out in my reviews playlists on my channel. You know, I think one of the things that bums me out about the Archer and Olive paper I tell you guys, like I used it, I used one for a bullet journal, filled it up, then tried again and just could not enjoy it. Partly because I, it's wasted on me. I like don't paint 
and I don't do lots of like, I guess I've been doing lots of marker shit recently, but like, I like my paper to feel used. Do you know what I mean? And because I didn't punish my paper hard enough, like, I'm sure you can, I'm sure you can do enough shit to this Archer and Olive paper where it gives you that used feel, but I could not manage to get that used feel because I wasn't doing a lot of shit to it. And so it just wasn't worth it. And these notebooks are more expensive than some of the other notebooks I've looked at, which is fine if this is important to you. But as it's not important to me, paying a premium for an Archer and Olive notebook when the best feature of it is the paper and that's lost on me, it just, it seemed like a waste. Do you know what I'm saying? And this is coming from somebody who I, I, myself, who I feel wastes hella money on stationary <laughs> supplies. Do you know what I mean? I, I agree that brights would bleed more than the soft. And I'm going to talk about that in a hot minute, artsy chickadee. Oh yeah. There's only one. There is only one single one on this entire page. Everything else gets the thumbs up. There is one that gets a meh. You can't even see it, but I can see it. And it's the liquid Sharpie. No surprise there. Everything else you can't even see on this fucking paper. There is no bleed through whatsoever. And the Sharpie is just a, a um, shadow. So we're going to do a meh for the Sharpie. No thumbs down. And then all of the rest get a thumbs up. I can't even say which one is the best because none of them show through. And that... Do I have the metallic fabric castells? I do. Let's take a look at those in the Archer and Olive because if something was going to bleed through, I bet that the metallic ones would. Where did I put them? Did I put them away? Away. They're just like thrown in a drawer. Sorry, Loki. Let's try. Let's try one and see if it bleeds through the Archer and Olive. Yep, the metallic one comes a little bit through. So there you go. The metallic... Faber Castells will bleed through the Archer and Olive a little bit. All right. So we're going to take a second here and I am going to just use this paper and I am going to test the erasability of the two, the two erasables against each other really quick so we have the friction on top and then we have the Crayola take note on the bottom and I'm gonna leave them here for a second and let that dry because I know with erasable things you got to let them dry before you fuck with them and in the meantime I'm going to talk about a couple of things regarding highlighters a the Stabilo Boss has come through this fairly decently, not great, but fairly decently, but I have noticed that the brighter colors, especially with the Stabilo Boss, bleed like a motherfucker, so I would be wary of these, but that is actually something I have noticed with a lot of the chonky highlighters. The chonky boys tend to be more moist. These boys are the moisty moist, not the sharp. I mean, the Sharpie liquid is absolutely moist, but the thick boys tend to let a little bit more ink flow and maybe it's from the shape of them. That is not the only reason that I don't care for fat highlighters as much, but it is one of them. The other reason fat highlighters tend to be low on my personal enjoyment list is I do not like how they feel in my hand. It doesn't matter what the shape is. It can be the st the Stabilo one, which is a little bit more like tapered, or it can be like a fucking rectangle like these guys. I have tendonitis. These guys do not feel nice in my hand. Now, a skinny, skinny mini like this guy also can make a struggle for me. I like one that is actually just a little bit more thick. That's why the S-Note and the Mild Liner, which are slightly more thick, tend to be my favorite to hold just because of my tendonitis. This may not be something you care about, but I am going to I'm going to tell you my opinion on especially on these Stabilo Boss highlighters that bleed like a motherfucker and that are not comfortable to hold. 
I swear to God, I think that the reason these are so popular is because they are so Instagram friendly. I don't think it's because of their function. I don't think it's because of their price. And I don't think it's because of their their uh, av availability of colors, their availability online. I don't think it's any of that. I think it is purely not that I'm saying if you like these that you're just doing it for the gram. I just think that the only reason these are as popular as they are is because they are aesthetically pleasing to look at the actual pen as a prop. That's my hot take about the Stabilo Boss highlighters. And I say basically the same thing in my, in my uh, review of them. I know that in the UK, Stabilo are everywhere because I actually learned that not because of the highlighters, but because of the fine liners, because I'm going to come back and say that Stabilo, the Stabilo, what is it? 88, I think is what they're called. Fine liners are some of my absolute favorite fine liners. Like this is only applying to the highlighters. Their fine liners, the colorful fine liners are my favorite colorful fine liners. Like by far, I love the Stabilo fine liners. So this is just about the highlighters for me. So I actually really like the chunky number two pencils that the kinder kids use. Um, I have a, where is it? Um, somewhere in one of my pencil box, my pencil like areas, I have a fat, a fat ass like graphite pencil that's thick like a kid's one, but it's a drawing pencil. I fucking love it. And I don't know where I got it. So, the yellow barrel, yes, let me grab one. I'll grab one right now. And I will be doing an office tour this next week, assuming I can finish cleaning my office up. Where the fuck are they? In here, in here, yeah. These guys. These fine liners, I love these fine liners. I love them so much. They are, the colors are great. I like how they feel in my hand and I enjoy the shit out of them. I like the lapens too, Elizabeth. I just wish they were longer. The lapens are so short that my hand starts to ache when I hold them. Yeah. Yeah, and I see, I see you guys talking about study tube, and I agree. Like, I've seen, like, these all of... That's where I seen saw these the most, was people talking about them for taking notes. So, you know, so many, so much consumerism everywhere. Okay, let's flip back to the erasables. Which one erases better? So we have the friction. So... Okay, that was kind of hot garbo. I took one pass back and forth, back and forth, and I pushed down a moderate amount. And you can see how the friction erased. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the Crayola, which I find interesting that the eraser is actually a chisel tip for the Crayola. And it's liquid, oh, that's sexy. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay, so in terms of ease of erasability, the Crayola Take Note are far superior to the friction, but there is something I'm noticing here. In terms of complete erasing, the friction are better. Notice here that the friction doesn't really leave that much of a cast, but the Crayola does. So if ease of erasability is what you're looking for, the Crayola Take Note are better than the friction. If actually erasing all as, like, as, men, as much trace of the highlighter as possible is more of what you want, the friction is probably what you want. I believe the Crayola are a lot cheaper. I could be wrong about that. Crayola Take Note are about a dollar each and the friction, no, they're the same price. Crayola Take Note have... Crayola Take Note have uh, less colors by one, a two than the Friction. So I guess the biggest differences here are to look in the actual sheet itself to find out if there's something you want. But in terms of erasability, they each have their own pros and cons. All right. So one is friction based and one is semical. 
you heard that friction pen yeah friction pens dry out hella fast if you were here on the last video i had two sets of the same colors of friction and the first set i tried was already dried out so it was garbo anyway so that's the these puppies now if we take a second here to talk about some of the differing aspects of some of these really quick just as a final kind of thought on these highlighters each kind of these highlighters has a different sort of sort of like draw to them and i want to kind of bring this up here at the end in case that is something you are thinking about first of all the zebra mild liners which tend to be one of the most visible highlighters on the platform you can get the chisel tip with the big brush, the big bullet tip, or you can get an extra fine bullet tip and a brush pen. And I believe they now have brush pens in all of the colors, though for a while it was only for 15 out of the 25. Out of all of these, I think these ones have the most versatile range of tips available to them. So there is that, especially if you want to brush letter with them. Although I will say some of the really mild ones, I don't know why you'd want to do that. There's You can't even read them. So there is that. Um, chemical, thank you. Um, and then also the Statler text surfers come in both this fatty boom batty and in a pen shape that can be used as both a thicker or a thinner highlighter. I prefer the pen shapes, but I wanted to utilize this one in the test. So there is also that. Now, the Faber-Castell, I did a video on these, and th this is one of their super fluorescent ones. I'm going to say, and I said this in the video, I think the claim of super fluorescent is kind of garbage because their fluorescentness is nowhere near as much as some of the other fluorescents I've seen. Like, it's not bad, but it's not, like, extreme, you know? If you look at some of these, like, they're not any more fluorescent than any other. Like, the Stabilo Boss fluorescents are way more fluorescent than the Faber-Castell. And they did not say that they were super fluorescent. So there is that. What did I eat for lunch? Oh, you're going to, guys, are going to judge me. I got KFC door dashed because I am about to start my period. And that's a period food for me. Now... When all of the ones that have the most writing tip style of them, I love the iconic two-way pens the most. I find that the Passion Planner colors are too pale for me to use for writing, but that the retro colors of the iconic pens are dark enough where you can actually read them. And of all of them, if you are on a budget, go for the super tips. You can dupe all of the colors of the mild liners, almost all of the Sharpie S note colors. You can dupe most of any highlighter color. You can use them as a highlighter and as a marker. And if you buy the hundred pack, they cost 15 cents each. So if you are on a budget, don't require the term highlighter to purchase your markers. The super tips can do a lot of work for that. Um, now I'm going to take a look at the, the screen really quick because I want to figure out here. Oh, I, did I ever, yes, I have to re, I have to restart this one again because there we go. Now they're all entered in when it comes to the one that has the highest ratings of them all. I want to say, I want to say that I think out of all of these, Give me one second here. I'm just kind of glimpsing around back and forth. There is only two of the highlighters in this entire situation that got consistent thumbs up with just one meh. There was not a single highlighter in this entire group that had consistently all thumbs ups or better. And like some of these might be the champion in their category, like uh, the take note on the bleed through or whatever, but it had thumbs downs or whatever on other ones. But there are two highlighters from this entire test that got one meh, no thumbs downs, no poops, and all thumbs up across the board. And that was not the mild liners. It was the Sharpie S note and the passion markers. Out of these two, if I was going to pick a winner, 
I would go with, for my personal taste, I would go with the, pa with the Sharpie S note because they are much cheaper than the passion markers. They are much more widely available. The passion markers, you can only get them at the passion planner website. Sharpie S note highlighters you can get on at Walmart, at Target, online, in a whole bunch of places. They're cheaper. There are more colors of the Sharpie S note. However, the passion markers have the writing tip as well as the regular tip. So that is a, um, a thing to take in mind. Although, like I said, the passion marker colors are all really soft and you can't really read much of what you get from the fine tip. But the Sharpie S note, for me, if I was going to say from all of these highlighters that I picked, the one that was consistently the best out of all of them, the one I would pick the most would be the Sharpie S note, which surprises the fuck out of me because that's not what I thought going into this. This font is called Comforta. Two A's. Comforta is what this font is. I love this font. It makes me so happy. And I would go with the super tips, even though they got thumbs down in some categories, I would go with the super tips because the price of them and the color, the amount of colors and the price far outweighs the fact that they might take a little bit longer to dry, especially since they're not highlighters, they're markers. But yeah, for me, the Sharpie S note is my champion highlighter. Anyway, so that takes me to the end of the Highlighter Thunderdome. I do, I am collecting brush pens to do a brush pen Thunderdome, but I am nowhere near ready for that one yet. But I really likes, I really likes, I really likes, likes the Gollum. No, I really like comparing things to each other, even though I will also add that I am not a scientist as much as I like to play one on TV. And I, these are all very, very, very personal, subjective opinions. All right. So like you may love one of these that I like, you might think these Stabilo Boss highlighters are the greatest thing ever. And I just totally talk trash on them and just know that like, just because I don't like something doesn't mean you're not entitled to like it. Like seriously, I recognize that everybody has different opinions, but one of the things I like to do on this channel is I have money that I get from AdSense, like Google AdSense and from my patrons. There is money that comes into the work I do every month that I set aside specifically to buy products, to review them, and to show you as much as I can so that when you make choices of buying things, that you're not going in only seeing what the companies want you to see because companies want you to buy their shit. It's marketing. And I want to show you what it's like for somebody who's not a fucking fancy person trying to use them to at least see my point of view on them because I, I want, if I have money set aside to spend to make stupid and like fuckery mistakes with buying shit, like those one pen, do you guys remember the brush pens I bought where the nibs kept going into the thing and it really fucking sucked? I think it was the UB brush pens. I have money set aside to make those mistakes and tell you about it. I would prefer that you don't spend money and make mistakes if you don't have to, because I know that our money is, is, is not, it's finite and we only have so much money to spend. And if I can make those mistakes for you, then I am glad to do it. That's also why I don't take sponsorships because I don't want to be put into a position to be paid to talk about something. Not that I think that people who take sponsorships change their opinions based on how much they get paid. I don't think that's the case, but I also know that by not taking sponsorships, it really helps me keep like my integrity and my, um, my objectiveness on the level. If that makes sense. A washy Thunderdome. How would that work? Hmm. I need to check out the Ahuhu brush pens. I, I need to, because I think I looked at them a long time ago and didn't care for them, but I've heard that they changed them. So when are the fuckery flowers coming back? Okay, so Jesse was supposed to get the shop back open by now, but we have had some other things that I can't talk about right now happening behind the scenes in terms of our family life that has thrown kind of a monkey wrench in it. So stay tuned. I will let you know more when I know more. I am working on series two of them right now. Finally, I've finally gotten back into that. But when it comes to the Etsy shop reopening, 
there's been a, a delay. So it'll come soon though. How it's tears, stickiness. Let me think about that. Let me think. Maybe I'll put up a, a post on the YouTube, on the YouTubes for you guys to give me your ideas on how I could compare them to each other. Have I tried any of the solid highlighters? I have some of the, I have a couple of different kinds of gel highlighters and I didn't include them in this because they're so different. I can talk about those at some point in a later video. I would do it now, but I don't know where they are because I still don't know where everything in my office is. Sticker paper for printing. Oh, thank you, Amy. I got this sweater from Target as most of my clothes. Yeah, that's a good idea. I might wind up doing that. So stay tuned for a potential washi tape Thunderdome questions situation. I like gel highlights because they're fun, but then I touch them after they're on the paper and it gives me the skeevies. It's like, I like the feel putting them on like you're putting lipstick on paper, but then you touch it and it's like, bleh. so anyway. I'm going to get going, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will be doing another live stream on Sunday as usual to set my week up. Um, it's been a fucking shit show of a week here in my house, and I am hoping that this next week is a little less intense. We shall see. Uh, but yeah, I will be on 2.30 Pacific time on Sunday to set my week up, and I hope to see you there. Until next time, friends, peace out.